Hello, welcome everyone back to the channel. My name is Mace and we're back for another video about Germany's most famous mouse, born of an artist's frustration. Let's uh, get into it. I don't know what that thing is spinny, spinny, spinning. Uh, this is from a request that was filled out on the Google Forms, which is in the description. It's the best way and I really appreciate if I do receive requests from you guys. Um, and not, to, not just to say that I'll appreciate it, but if you want to get something uh you know you want me to take a look at something on the channel that's definitely the best way to do it like that's just the most efficient and the best way and i will definitely see it you can even just go there and tell you know send me a message tell me you, you don't like my my artwork or you know tell me i look stupid whatever you <laughs> whatever you want uh it's fine and but best of all you can send me requests there this one is from somebody simply from deutschland and they said that it's a show about a mouse that's very iconic um and quote something very german unquote so this will be my first exposure to this famous mouse and yeah i'm excited to get into it and discover what it's all about i got my canucks hat on we lost game two i know we we might we we got some Canucks fans out there somewhere. The Vancouver Canucks, it's my team, um, it's where I live, etc. And I got my Hockey Night in Canada jersey on. Check it out. So I'm ready for for playoffs. It's playoff time, baby. So that's why I'm in that mode right now. But I'm also in the mode to check out this mouse. Check out this mouse. That doesn't sound right. That does not sound right. Uh, yeah, let's do it. On the 23rd of January 1972, one of Germany's most iconic children's TV shows. 1972. Uh, so 82, 92, 2002, 2012. So 50, wow, 52 years ago. It was after less than a year on air, renamed in honor of its brand new mascot and has been broadcast under the same name ever since. The friendly orange mouse has remained virtually unchanged since then and continues to educate and entertain new generations of German children. Educate Each and entertain. Of several different segments. There are stories, comedy sketches, songs, and short documentaries, often about how everyday objects are made. And everything stitched together with short. That's cool. It's somewhat random about the how everyday objects are made thing. That's still educational, don't get me wrong. Somebody mentioned also that Bernd das Brot, Bernd das Brot was also an educational program, but it seems to me that he was, you know, his favorite pastime is doing nothing and he's like cynical and depressed and kind of negative. He just wants to be left alone. And it seemed to be, you know, Bernd das Brot. As funny as that skit was, people said it, there was a couple comments that said it was like nonsensical and stupid and designed to get people to turn it off. But it also gained a cult following from like stoners and drunks and <laughs> not just stoners and drunks, but, you know, everybody can fall under the umbrella uh, of liking Bernd Das Brot and that it was kind of designed as an after hour show so kids would say like oh this is stupid i'm gonna go to sleep now and that's what he tries to do he tries to get you to change the channel and all of that stuff uh so it's interesting seeing the binary style of this show and how it's you know kind of opposite or different very much different it's often about how everyday objects are made and everything stitched together with short animations featuring the mouse himself sometimes accompanied by his improbably sized friends it served to introduce to <laughs> german audiences such shows as his improbably sized friends sean das schaff Sean the Sheep and Pepper Pig, but also some equally iconic homegrown content, such as Captain Blaubeer, about a retired sailor who tells his grandchildren tall tales about his younger days. It's hard to imagine now, but when it first launched in 1971, it was not an overnight success. It was originally called Lach und Sachgeschichten für Fernsehanfänger, which was certainly descriptive, 
But how many children were going to beg their parents to be allowed to watch something with that title? <laughs> More to the point, the creators believed that there was way too much chatter on TV, and so kept dialogue to an absolute minimum. And that meant that the documentary segments in particular were strangely uninformative and dull. Not only that, but many people accused the show of actively encouraging children to be mute, along with other frankly bizarre crimes against humanity. Proof positive that fully grown adults could be as unreasonable back then as they can be now. Hey, right? What a, a, a fact that people will assign blame or causes to different things and try to they'll, yeah you know without evidence they'll try to pull down these shows and to blame them for certain things that are going on in the world when it's just art grown adults could be as unreasonable back then as they can be now. The creators gradually added more dialogue, although it took them a while to get the pacing right. But now the documentaries are really good and genuinely mm -hmm. interesting. So much so that the average age of the audience is now 40, as parents and grandparents <laughs> said. So over time, it became more informative and more interesting. And combined with the people that watched it as children, as the show progressed throughout time, it gained more and more audience as generations probably came together and coalesced, whereas kids were growing older. Uh, those kids then became adults who had children and then could watch the show with their children or they're just 40 year old adults that are like single and watching it as well. And that's totally fine as well. You know, good. That's, mm. you know, do what do do you is is the saying, right? Do what makes you happy. Settle down to watch the show with the children. But what really yeah. made the show what it is today came about when the producers asked an artist called Isolde Schmidt Menzel to provide illustrations for one of the stories that peace. was to be featured on the show. It was about a mouse that gets trapped overnight in a shop. She took the job, but she wasn't happy about it. It was not the kind of art that she was really interested in, and the thought of having to paint all these grey mice was really off-putting. So she painted the mice in different colors. The main protagonist of the story was given an orange body with brown ears, arms, and legs. The broadcaster's editor for children's television liked the drawings so much that he asked her to provide ideas for short skits involving the mouse, which could be animated and inserted between segments. And so she dutifully came up with storyboards for 10 of these skits, along with the advice to the animator that the mouse should walk a little bit like Charlie Chaplin. And so a legend <laughs> was born. The first animations were ready by January 1972, and the entire show was renamed Die Sendung mit der Maus. Which is Die Sendung mit der Maus. The show with the mouse. <laughs> That's amazing. Like the, the, the title is literally The Show with the Mouse. Die Sendung mit der Maus. And I remember from the uh, Berend Das Blot video, my new favorite word that I've been using. Ah, mist. <laughs> Which is definitely an improvement over the previous title. And the show as a whole has held up very well against some very stiff competition. The mouse is now firmly Ernie established and, as part of the wait, German... Ernie and... Fred and Ernie? Fred and Ernie, right? Sesame Street? Yeah. See, I still remember... They really, they really do a good job. They do a number on you with these kid shows. Some very stiff competition. The mouse is now firmly established as part of the German cultural... Wait, I got that wrong. It's Bert and Ernie, not Fred and Ernie. Some very stiff competition. McFly! The mouse is now firmly established as part of the German cultural landscape and often pops up in the most unexpected of places. Uh, for example, in one season, the show followed the construction of an Airbus A321, which is currently operated by Lufthansa. And you'll know which one it is the moment you see it. And the mouse has even been in <laughs> space. In 1992, German astronaut Klaus Dietrich Flader took a cuddly <laughs> toy mouse with him to the Mir space station. As for the artist herself, it seems that she grew to be proud of her creation, or at least was happy to be associated with it. 
And she later said that she put so much Why of not? herself into the character that she was the mouse. Not bad, considering her initial dread at having to paint something as boring as a mouse for a children's TV show which, given its initial reception, well, it flourished. almost didn't make it beyond its first year. Oh, and if you want... Yeah, it's like anything that's created and, and, you know, initially it might seem boring to her and then I'm sure that the character, as it grew and it gained in popularity, it flourished and it changed and the dynamic changed, it innovated and, uh, yeah, it grew into something that she became uh, appreciative of. Appreciated. 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 I was just joking on the, the last couple of scripts, but appreciative of. Are studying German, have reached an intermediate level, and have ever wondered how gumboots are made or how escalators work, you might want to take a look. That is something that I wonder about. I, I've dreamt about this, like, how do escalators work? Look at the show's official YouTube channel. I've put a link in the description. Great video. Broke it down. The history of this mouse, 50 year history, over 50 year history, the creation, the creators, kind of the cultural impact that it's had. It's been to space. It's been with that astronaut. It's been on Lufthansa jets. It's very cool. Uh, the show with the mouse. Appreciate it. Great recommendation. And uh, yeah, there was no name left with that uh, recommendation. So the man or lady from Deutschland. Thank you. Danke, I should say. All right. See you in the next one. Ciao.